Benjamin, Minister for Presidential Affairs, and the representative of His Excellency, Sarko Kirmayadid, President of the Republic of South Sudan, and the Chancellor of the University of Juba. Honorable Governor Town Aken North, Governor of Northern Bahamasan State. Honorable Simon Bajok Yak, Minister of Roads and Bridges. Honorable Dr. Theo Mazok, Minister of Investment. All ministers are present. The Chairman of the University of Council, Dr. Manas Pamalo, Romala Waya. Honorable other secretaries, Honorable Members of Parliament present, Excellencies, the Ambassadors, and members of the Deputy Coast, the business leaders present here, the members of civil society, members of academic communities, our students and faculty, all protocols observed. It is with great pleasure to welcome you to this fundraising event. And at the outset, I would like to thank His Excellency President Sakakir Mayadic, the President of the Republic of South Sudan, for delegating Honorable Minister for Presidential Affairs to represent him in this important event. I would also like to thank Dr. Honorable Dr. Manas Ramadawaya, the Chairman of the University of Juba Council and the Chair of the Humanitarian and Relief Commission for his guidance, his support and advice during the launch of this fundraising event. I'm very grateful to Professor John Myrie Blackings and his most able team who are working tirelessly to organize this event. I know so much work that has gone into this effort. I am deeply grateful. Well done. Honorable Dr. Bernardo Marial and our guest of honor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Great universities do not just happen, nor fall from the skies. They are made to succeed. The people managing them and the economic environments surrounding them contribute to their stagnation or cause to their rise to the top. In academic circles, we often speak of Harvard here syndrome. And this is the desire by many countries to have in their backyard universities of the statue of MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, Chicago, ETH, Zurich, UCL, Cornell, Edinburgh, Yale, Columbia, Imperial, Duke, Johns Hopkins, Tokyo, Pekin, and such like. These are a few names gleaned from the list of 1,000 top world-class universities by QS World University Ranking 2020. They were named here and selected for their excellence in teaching and high impact research output. Being absent from the top 1,000 global universities, however, does not mean that it doesn't mean the end of the road for a university. The global higher education market has over 25,000 universities and is still counting. India, United States, China, Indonesia, Brazil, Russia, and Japan lead with a combined lion's share of 17,000 universities between them. And that forms about 70% of recorded universities in the world. Many universities across the globe are serving their communities and helping 
the nation to weather competition in knowledge-intensive sectors of global economy. Although some universities are doing better than others. National higher education policies and financial efforts afforded by the government to support teaching and research and infrastructure development play a great role in determining how universities thrive. Successful universities are ones that do better than their circumstances might have allowed them to, or those who are able to punch above their weight, according to Michael Shatter uh, of the University of Warwick Business School and Visiting Fellow at the Institute of Education, University of London, and also a member of Oxford University Global Higher Education Research Group. Michael Shattuck holds that success does not happen overnight because of a one-off critical decision by a manager, but comes about as a result of university managers taking many small but right decisions over a long period of time. These decisions reinforce one another to produce cumulative effect that sustains the organization in upward trajectory. Furthermore, increasing reforms, increasingly the reforms are being enacted in many jurisdictions that require that universities act like businesses, agile and capable of allocating their resources efficiently and effectively to do more with less and to respond quickly to ever-changing operating environment and the implication of globalization of higher education, the ascendancy of digital economy, and the advent of the fourth industrial revolution. Honorable uh, Barnaba Maria and our guest of honor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the University of Cuba was established in 1975 to the minor sense. Teaching began in October 1977 with four colleges, other education and training and social and economic studies, natural resources and environmental studies, and school of education. A year later, precisely in 1978, the College of Medicine was established. However, its, operating, op its operation in Cuba was disrupted by the outbreak of the Civil War in 1983. This forced the university to finally move to Khartoum in 1989. There, the university grew into a comprehensive university with 13 schools and four and colleges and four specialized centers, a student population of 18,000 and faculty of 700 by 2011, when it finally began to relocate back to Cuba. When South Sudan declared its independence on the 9th of July 2011, the university lost 800 students to Sudan and remained with just about 10,000 of them. The number of academic staff plummeted from 700 academic staff by June 2011 to about 139 by July 2011. The university lost its valuable assets, including labs, vehicles, buildings, lands, and other useful teaching facilities to the University of Bahrain, which took over the University of Juba in Kadro, in northern Khartoum. By 2014, when I came into the administration of the University of Juba, there were about 10,000 students and 29, uh, 291 academic staff, slightly higher than 139 in July 2011. In December 2014, the University of Cuba Council, under the able leadership of the Reverend Clement Gender, passed a 15-year master plan. The master plan revised the vision and mission of the University of Cuba in order to reflect the realities and the needs of a sovereign country, as opposed to an autonomous region of Sudan, which it was when the University of Cuba project was conceived by its founding 
others in 1970s. Our mission statement now, according to our master plan, is that the University of Uber is a leading educational center of excellence that is committed to national economic empowerment and social transformation through provision of quality education, pursuit of, res uh, of relevant research, promotion of innovation, facilitation of technology transfer, revival of national cultural heritage, protection of the environment, and service to community. Our vision is to become a dynamic regional and world-class center of excellence in teaching, research, innovation, and service to community by 2030. We are driven by a new motto of inventing the future, transforming society. Our core values include encouragement and cherishing of free and independent thought, celebration of scholarship, excellence, and creativity and initiative, working as a team, maintenance of inclusive, safe, and clean working environment for the students and staff, providing equal opportunities for all, and university autonomy. Our 11 strategic goals to be achieved by 2030 are widening access to quality higher education, internet, internationalization, pursuit of research that has social economic impact, empowering and serving communities, assisting in national integration into global knowledge-based economy, facilitation of technology transfer to key strategic economic sectors, revival of cultural and creative industries, harnessing alumni contribution, promotion of responsible use of natural resources and environmental sustainability, leveraging ICT and enhancing internet connectivity or teaching and reposition of research, finally producing transformative leadership. Honorable Bernaba Marial, our guest of honor and representative of the Chancellor. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, with our mission in mind and guided by our vision, 2030, the University of Cuba has made progress towards attainment of its strategic goals, especially in widening access to quality higher education. The number of schools has risen from 13 schools and colleges in 2014 to about 21 schools and two colleges and three institutes and, is, and six specialized centers by the academic year 2022-2023. The number of students has increased from 10,000 in 2014 to more than 30,000 in this academic year 2022-2023. Our target for 2030 is to reach 60,000 students. The number of academic staff has tripled from about 300 to 1,000 in 2022. Our target of the faculty is 3,000 by 2030. Our postgraduate programs now stand at 95 training programs, training about 3,000 to 4,000 students. That is up from a few hundreds in 2014. Our target by 2030 is about 10,000. We are almost attaining half of that already. Infrastructure, including lecture halls, labs, electricity, and internet, have improved. It brought academic stability to the university and also good name. The University of Dubai Enterprise, a trading arm of the university, was established in order, was established in 2015 in order to create a financially sufficient university. It is doing what it can to raise third revenue streams by collecting land lease rents from small vendors on the campus. In the jargon of corporate world, the University of Cuba administration since 2014 has picked up plenty of low uh, hanging fruits that range from regular annual graduation ceremonies to iconic entrance gates, certificate with improved security features, to turning disused stores into labs or lecture halls, to landscaping and greening of our campuses, to sustainable waste management by our students, to longer hours of electricity, 
to compass wide fast internet connectivity to improve management and financial standing of the university. And all this is great and good. Yet, our expansion in student numbers and number of programs has not been matched by the expansion in educational and research infrastructure, including serious shortages in lecture halls, spaces, wireless supplied libraries, labs, office spaces, and student accommodation because of financial constraints. Between 2020 to 2021, our uni rank, the university position, improved markedly by 600 places up just between 2019, you know, 2020-2021. That's 600 points up the rank of world ranking. At the moment, we number 300 out of 1,000 registered African universities or we are added in the top 30% of highly ranked African University. We can do much better than this. I'm sure you recognize. It is therefore our goal to move the University of Guba to, to be among the 100 top universities in Africa in three years. And that is to be in the top 10%. And in order to achieve this goal, we need to markedly improve our infrastructure because of low tuition fees that we are collecting from the students. The Senate of the University of Juba passed several resolutions in September 2022. This included adjustment of all tuition fees to inflation, revised tuition fees for privately admitted students, and imposition of $100 development fees on all our students, undergraduate, diploma, and postgraduate. The aim is to raise, as it was explained here earlier, three million US dollars of financial resources to supplement the low tuition fees students are paying in comparison to the region in every financial year. This will accelerate infrastructure development and enhancement of learning in environment in our university. We will also be able to develop new programs and accommodate an increasing number of the students who are longing to join the University of Juba as the students. This year, we plan to construct a lecture hall complex that can accommodate other amenities such as central, central library, computer labs, and printing services, seminar rooms, business spaces, food courts for students, staff, uh, and you know for our staff and visitors. And we aim also to, to maintain and expand girl hostel as one of our top priorities in this financial year. The capacity has already been explained that at any single time we'll be able to educate 4,000 students in varied sizes of the hall and we'll be able to seat about uh, uh, 1,000 seats in our libraries and we'll have a very compact social space including business areas, computer labs and so forth. The amount raised in this fundraising event will reduce the burden on all our students. For example, as it was explained, if we raise three million US dollars, our students will pay, only pay their tuition fees. If we raise 1.5 million, our students will only pay the remaining 50%, meaning each student will pay $50 or its equivalent in SSP on the top of their tuition fees. We do value your financial and moral support, and I really want to thank every one of you who have turned up today to support us. You have really exceeded my expectation. Please give yourself a call. Thank you. I now have the honor of inviting the Chairman of the University of the Council, Honorable Dr. Manasseh Lomele Waya, to deliver his remarks and 
later to invite our guests of honor. Thank you again.